Good evening, everybody. Happy Palm Sunday. We're out here at the creek. Got a special guest tonight. This is my wonderful husband, Richard Burris. He's going to be playing a song to start us off with. Enjoy. I cast no stone. I feel no one. I tell the truth when the truth comes to call. I try to walk. Give us a second while we switch around the camera. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, he's been instructed to uh, just get me from here up because I'm a little mismatched right for the video, you know, because the quarantine thing. No, just because it's Sunday. So happy Palm Sunday, guys. Um, I had someone specifically request a message today, and that just overjoyed my heart. I remember the time that I did pastor a church and how when these Christian holidays and uh, Christian holidays came up, uh, the things that I love to study, and I just study them side by side. So we should all know what we're celebrating and why, no matter what the day is. And, and honestly, when we understand and have an attitude of gratitude, then every day is a day for a feast. Every day is a reason for a celebration. However, there's something very important about coming together. There's something very important about feasting and celebration or else God wouldn't have outlined all these feasts in the Old Testament that he did for his people to keep. He knew that his people would get caught up in the hustle and the bustle of living in life, of living a life of agriculture and, and raising animals. 
So he outlined these different feasts all throughout the year for them to come together and to celebrate and remember different things that God had done at different times. As Christians, the Christian community comes together on Sundays and Wednesdays and um, Sunday nights or whatever. And we should come together every morning and every night and remember the things that God has done, right? Especially during these days. So as we're going into this time, the Christian community calls it Easter. In Matthew, what Jesus was celebrating was, was the Passover, okay? So he was heading into Jerusalem, and he had already told his disciples, he had already foretold, he would already prophesied what would happen to him when he got to Jerusalem. He knew what was coming. He knew why he came to this earth. He knew what his destiny was, right? So he already told his disciples what was coming. He told them that there would be an ass tied up, a colt to go and find it. It was one that had never been ridden. And he was fulfilling prophecy that had been in the Old Testament over a thousand years or so before. And so the disciples went where Jesus told them to go and they found the ass tied up where he said it was. And they brought it back to Jesus and they put their, took their clothes off and they put their clothes on top of that donkey and they put Jesus on top of it. And as they went towards and into Jerusalem, the people began to take palm fronds. Palms were a sign and a symbol of peace. Jesus was coming in on that donkey and those people were waving those palm fronds and saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna is save us, Savior, right? Jesus riding on a colt was very specific and very purposeful. It was a sign of a king coming in peace. A king coming for war comes on a horse the way that Jesus is going to return. But he purposely entered Jerusalem on a donkey as a symbol of being the Prince of Peace. Now, the Jewish people that worshiped him, that were singing Hosanna, they had heard that this cat raised the dead, that he healed the blind, that the lame were walking. Many of them had been on that mountainside when he turned a little boy's lunchbox into enough food to feed a multitude. They had seen and heard of his miracles. And so, Imagine if Russia ruled us right now in America and all of our taxes went to Russia and we had to do what Russia told us to do. That's what was going on with the Jews at that time. Rome filled their streets. They were under Roman occupation. And so the Jews were looking for Jesus to be the fulfillment for him to set up his kingdom right then. They were looking for him to be the king that was prophesied by their prophets and to set up a literal physical kingdom to deliver them from the Romans from the oppression of an occupying force. So they're waving the palm fronds, they throw him down in front of him as he rides and he enters into Jerusalem. Do you know what one of his first acts is when he gets into Jerusalem? He goes into the temple and he throws over the money changers' tables. The things of the kingdom of God are not to be bought and sold. Jesus showed us that from the very beginning. God is not for sale. He doesn't need our money. He has cattle on a thousand hills and a thousand hills full of thousands of cattle, right? Jesus was disgusted at what was being displayed as his father's love and his father's, he, he, the, the laws and rules had been laid out in the Old Testament and they were being violated and sold and debased inside the temple walls and Jesus wasn't having it. So that all happened on what we call Palm Sunday, the entry into Jerusalem. We as Christians need to know our heritage. We need to know what Jesus was celebrating and he was celebrating Passover. And the Passover was instituted when the Jews were delivered in the Exodus. When God told them to put the blood over their doorway and the angel of death came and it, all the children of Egypt under two years of old, old that were boys died. But Israel's house was passed over. And the next morning they took off for the first day of the Exodus. So... Every year, the Jews were to remember when God delivered them from Egypt, supernaturally. When the angel of death didn't touch their home. When they had Mount Sinai at their front and they had the Red Sea at their back. And Pharaoh coming after them. And somehow that sea parted. And they were delivered to the other side. That was a pretty big deal and God said, remember it. And so they did year after year after year until that's the very feast that Jesus was celebrating as what we go into this week called the Passion Week in Christianity. He was going to celebrate that time of Passover. 
with his disciples. He was going to fulfill prophecy. Check out the Old Testament feast. Jesus was born on a feast. Jesus died on a feast. The Holy Spirit came on a feast. And I believe that the rapture and tribulation will happen on a Jewish feast as well. These Christian feasts came out of the Catholic Church in different places that we keep. And that's okay. The Bible says, let no man judge you according to your feasts. But know what the Passover was and know what the Passover is. And that as our backs as a nation and as a world are up against the Red Sea and we got the mountain in front of us, know that no matter what happens, God will deliver us somehow in some way. That's what faith is. As we head up to what we call Good Friday and the Passion and the Cross, just make sure you remember the other side of it, that he didn't stay there. Make sure as you go into, we can't even go into the temples right now, but the temple, we are the temple. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We don't need things inside of us either that don't belong. Jesus turns over the tables of my heart every day and shows me ways that I need to repent. The Catholics on Wednesday will be Ash Wednesday. They'll put ashes here as a sign and a symbol of repentance. Repentance needs to be a daily act for all of us because we all fall short of the glory of God. When we repent and we acknowledge and we're aware of who Christ is, then that makes that fellowship with him that much more sweet. Remember that he came as the Prince of Peace for us to have peace. He already fought for us. He already fought the battle for the Father, from the Father, all of that, so that we don't have to and we can just rest today. So I hope we can rest in that. And we don't have to say, Hosanna, save us, because Jesus has already saved us. So I have my husband back here on with some more music here and some not church church. God bless you guys, and we'll see you next time.